Hey everyone, this is Jamie Pate. Welcome to another video. I'm jumping right in. Okay, when, when I say I'm jumping right in, that means there's not my face and there's not a huge introductory. I'm just jumping right into the thing. Today's video is a walkthrough. A walkthrough of what, you ask? It's a walkthrough of what I kind of call, I don't really kind of call it this, I actually call it this, Stash Buster mini albums. There are several makers out there and Paige Evans comes to mind where she makes a Coptic book for every one of her collections and I can totally get why she would do that. Today I want to share kind of a similar idea to that but it's more I get to the end of a collection and I'm not using it that much anymore. And I want to at least have the elements and the papers and the embellishments and stamps or whatever goes with that collection. I at least want it to be someplace and useful. So I make what I call stash busting mini albums. Actually, I just made that up. I didn't call them that before. For example, this is an album I did last November and I have a post on my blog that's called What the Scrap because it is a book filled with scrap paper from Color Fresh. I have a ton of Color Fresh and I'm going to show you something here really quick. This is Color Fresh and if you recognize this, this is Honey and Spice. And I don't have a resource for this, but this is a 12 by 12 box that I store my older collections inside of. It has this great book plate, so I'll put obviously the collection name on there. It's a 12, it's practically actually a bit more than a 12 by 12 box. And I think I got them from Joanne. No, take that back, from the Hobby Lobby at the time. What I do currently is I keep my collections in a drawer in, um, that I can just pull out and grab and use at will. But then, you know, you've heard the saying, if you want to eliminate and minimize and declutter your possessions that put them away for three months, put them away for six months. If you don't use them, then you don't need them anymore and move them on. So that's kind of what I do with this box. So I realized I hadn't used my honey and spice box. So it got me thinking, I bet there's plenty out there who think the same thing. What am I going to do with this collection that I'm not really using in my everyday storytelling anymore? So that's what this video is all about. First, I want to talk about this little mini album because it's the one that I have done the most recently. Like I said, you can recognize this is Honey and Spice. This book was made from the class that Heidi Swap teaches on her HeidiSwapShop.com website. And it's called It's a Cinch. And why is it called It's a Cinch? Because it's a class that takes you through four different classes and four different binding techniques using the Cinch machine. So I took one of those classes to make this book. This is probably one of my favorite cinch binding techniques, and it's called hidden binding. And I'm going to link this class here below. This will not be showing you how to make this. This is her baby, and I want you to see how she does it. So the class is made up of four different book techniques. The class is about 40 bucks, so it makes it like $10 a book. And obviously, you're going to use this idea over and over again. So be sure and check that out linked below. So I have all these papers that are part of Honey and Spice that I really didn't want to separate myself from them quite yet. So I went to making this book. Um, I made the covers. All the pattern paper is from Honey and Spice, so I won't be repeating that. But the some of the stamps are some recent Heidi Swap stamps. It's the Hyped set. It's one of my favorite sets. And so I have those sentiments stamped on some of the pages in here. Other than that, as I walk you through, you're just going to see I've just grabbed stickers that I have still left over from Honey and Spice. And I added a piece of acetate paper in here as well. I've added little just tabs to make it easier to open, close a page. Um, labels have been torn and added to pages. I, literally, this is just was just a scrap found in my box of papers. It was just like that. So I threw it on there. But I had fun just kind of mixing and matching papers. 
I mean, I tell you, there is seriously no huge rhyme or reason to putting these papers in here. But at the same time, I was kind of not overthinking it and just throwing some combinations together. So uh, little pieces of ephemera are found on some of these. I have plenty of space here. I really do want, I love quotes and I'm coming across quotes all the time. And then I'm later on in my day or my week and I'm like, what was that quote? This was just fun, just kind of putting out a little layout. You know, I might stick a pic, I left it so I could stick a little photo in here. Just, you know, if I want to. Just had fun, I just played. This was an exercise in just creative play. There was no desired outcome except just to make a book. I, I did want to play with the book concept and I was super glad I did. And I want to kind of play with it again and get a little better at you know, adhering my, my, my covers a little better. So I'll definitely do that again, just because I want to be good at that. But as far as what is in this book, um, I really just kind of threw things together, just stapled this vellum piece on here. This was such a beautiful collection. Maybe you can see why I wanted to keep some of this and not just, I very often donate leftover uh, collections and I'll kind of kit them up and make them to where somebody would actually want to use those papers and I make tags out of them or whatever. I do a whole bunch of stuff when I'm giving away older collections. I didn't want to give this one away yet. Um, there's literally an envelope just sitting in the box. I'm like, hmm, what the heck? Um, added more embellishments here. This is just kind of fun. Butterflies, of course. Oops, a little piece of adhesive backing there. Um, a lot of times, too, I'll see something that a maker has done, has made, and I stapled those pages together. I'm not sure if I meant to do that. Isn't that hysterical? That's so funny. But often I'll see something that a maker, an embellishment that a makers have put together just when I'm perusing whether it's Instagram or Pinterest, it doesn't quite matter. And so I took some of those ideas even and just kind of played with them in here in some of my embellishment clusters. So nothing fancy. And I put a lot of papers in here. I did that on purpose. But maybe I should come back at some point after I fill in some of the quotes that I know are going to go in here and share that with you. Now, this mini album is also actually, oh, it's the same binding. How funny. I didn't even realize I had done that. That is, at least I'm consistent, right? <laughs> Uh, only sometimes. Um, so I, I had a lot of fun with this book. It's a little bigger. It might be six by eight. I would guess six by eight. This, by the way, if I didn't tell you the dimensions of this, this book is seven inches tall and the pages are four and a half inches wide. You have to give some allowance for the binding. And that's what I did here. And this is exactly the measurements that Heidi teaches in It's a Cinch class. This one's a little bit bigger. I don't actually know what initially inspired the making of this one, but it is the same hidden binding that she shares in that class. So we'll take a little bit extra time on this one because this one you could actually call, we used to make, back in the day we used to make um, mixed pages journals, mixed page journals. I'm trying to think what we call the mixed page, mixed pages journals. That's not right, but the idea is it was mixed pages. So this was literally the reason I called this post on my blog, What the Scrap, is because these pages that became part of this mini album literally were already this size. And so I challenged myself to make something with these odd cutoffs that I had. You know, if I had something big enough to make an envelope, I made an envelope and I have a little another piece of paper inside. Uh, and more stamping, some other Heidi Swap stamps there. Just fun stuff. <sighs> Sometimes we get a little too serious in our making. I know I do, but you know, I kind of, you know, some of this is I do for my job. So making these kinds of books are like pure joy for me. And this one's just so happy. And while I haven't necessarily gone in and added a whole bunch of anything, I've just, I just liked, it's like my memory decks cards. Um, I just like having them. So I made a little uh, pocket there attached to the hay. That was literally a cutoff from another project that I had done. And I just backed it with vellum. 
I think it's my friend Lynette who who likes how I use the um, negative when I punch out a butterfly, and so I do that a lot. Uh, a little tab. This might have been a memory dex card, and then I just cut it down and added it to this book. Uh, does this come out? No, that's attached, but I do have a little hideaway in here with more stamping on it. Again, literally sitting in my box, having die cut this document out, and then I just added it to the book. Lots of different things kind of peeking out from the back. I adore that. Another negative, just added a stamp to it. I mean, there's no reason we couldn't add photos to this if, if there's stories here we want to tell. Um, here's like a little kind of a folder with a little flip book in it. So just a look at what you can do if you have a collection and you not really quite ready to part with it, but you don't really think you're going to use it anymore in a mini album or a scrapbook page, then have some fun. Make some tags for goodness sake. Look at just made tags and sewed stuff to them. <laughs> I'm cracking myself up. I love doing this. I need to do this more often. But you got to you got to kind of know that maybe for sure you're ready to depart with to part, not depart. Don't depart, please, but to part with that particular collection and then just have some fun. Now this one's a little abused. I'll just be honest with you. I lost a sticker there, so I just need to find another sticker and cover that back up. I uh, use some alpha letters here to write this art. So I love this gold. I think these might even still be available. And just use some alpha letters. You could use stamps. You could stamp the whole entire cover. The sky's the limit, guys. And that's what this post this week was about. Sky's the limit in anything and everything we ever want to create. Just make stuff and have fun. Allow the making and the, just, the, just the no focus on some kind of outcome. Allow that to feed your creativity. I bet looking at this, you saw something today that you would maybe actually implement on a scrapbook page. And so did I actually. So I'm glad to have these ideas. Thank you for letting me share them with you. And I will see you in the next video. Wow.